<laughs> everybody. For some reason, today, Tuesday feels kind of like a Friday to me. I don't know why. But um, let's go ahead and get any kind of Q&A going on. Hey, Spencer, how are you? <clears throat> hey, Jasmine, I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Okay, does anybody have any questions that they would like to start with? Hey, Will, Shakira, Sipo, how are you guys doing today? Hey, Jasmine, doing good. Good, good, good. Do you guys have any questions to start with? I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say that, but about the BK, right? Yes, I have the BK and I also have about the five accounts. Remember, uh, we had someone come in and talk about the five accounts. Okay. Like, and like this one is. Account? Yeah, you remember she talked about you have to have an account for profits, for owners' uh, um, uh, pay, mm -hmm. um, for the taxes, and for. My question is, like for the profits, is that account going to be in my name or in the company's name? So essentially, these five bank accounts are would be in, uh, in your business bank account. So now your profit account, or if you could call it like owner's draw account, um, you would essentially transfer those funds to your personal account. But these accounts would start off in your business bank account. So it would be in your business account name. Okay, because she did mention that the, the profits and um, the taxes accounts should be somewhere where you are not going to be, is where you can easily access them. And so in my mind, I thought maybe, I will take them to another bank mm -hmm. and will they be in my name or in the business name account? So it would still be in your business name though. It would still be totally in your business name. And mm -hmm. she's just stating that as a reference to those that may not have like financial discipline that will know not to touch those accounts. Right. Because those are the accounts, those are the accounts that would build up, right? Like they would just start stacking up and somebody that may not have financial discipline may start taking from those. So they, it's kind of like the, the policy, like out of sight, out of mind scenario, but mm -hmm. it would still be in your business name though. Cause you don't want to co-mingle funds. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And did you have a question about BK? Um, with BK, I don't have like a specific question, but it's just the setting up that confuses me. Like you do this, you did it. Just the following up of following every step is, is what is confusing me. Mm -hmm. I know it is all there, but it's just too much overwhelming for me. Yeah. Did you have any like any areas you want me to go over? Um, if you would go over the part where, uh, especially the part where you, you have to, to put them in the, the prices, there is square footage, there is, um, the other part. So that's kind of confusing to me. Okay. Do you, have you, um, have you figured out your, like your price points yet? I have, I, I've got my list down. Okay, so let me let me go there. Let me start pulling that up. Um, give me a couple minutes, let me pull that up. Does anybody have any questions while I pull this up? And I'm gonna come back, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up and get to that area and then I'm gonna swing back around. Okay. And I'm so sorry for those that may be like putting your question in the chat. Since I'm on BK, I cannot see your question. So if you guys mind coming off 
um, mute, I can be able to hear um, and get pull this up at the same time. Hey, Wes. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Jasmine. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Just good. tuning in. Good, good, good. Okay. I am currently, you guys, pulling up a BK question. So I'm on BK. But if, while I'm looking this up, if you guys have any questions, please start shooting them at me. Um, okay, I think this is it. And did you use form one? Yes, I used form one. Okay. Settings. Okay. Hey, Sherry, I'm sorry I had you in that waiting room. I was on another screen. Okay. Very V tripping. Okay. So is this the area right here? Um where like you have to put in all these different pricing parameters? Yes, right? that, yes, okay. that's the price. Okay. Yes, I think somebody else had sent me a message on this same. I must have did something. Send me a message on the same thing. Um me, I did, Sherry. Yes, I was like, somebody sent me the same message, <laughs> the same thing. Yes, please go over this, Jazz, because I it was killing me. So I was, I was about to give it up, girl. <laughs> I know it's this platform is super, super non user friendly. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not user friendly <laughs> whatsoever. So it's like you really have to do um, just like almost math in a sense, right? Because they're saying like this is how much they're charging for each additional bathroom. So if it's a one bathroom, it's $10. Um, one and a half bath is 15, two, uh, two bath is 25, right? And then you come down here and you add up the square footage. So like, if you have a square footage home that is between 1,000 and 1,499, it's an $10 charge plus a one bath of a $10 charge. So that makes it $20. And then if you come down here and it's, let's say a one bedroom, then it's $90. So then that would be $110 for a, essentially a one, one under 1400 square feet. Can I just ask you something about that real quick? Yes. So basically what you're saying is we're adding bedrooms plus bathrooms plus square footage? Correct. Okay. Okay. Cause that was throwing me off. And I was looking at your other video, but I, I couldn't quite get it. I thought I was missing something, but I think I was just overthinking it. Okay. Yeah. So we're doing that with each, like, like say if it's a deep clean. So we're and it's a, I don't know, a two bedroom, uh, uh, two bath, say 2000, um, square feet. We're going to just do that with each, um, booking. Well, your That's deep clean, I don't know why this keep doing this. Your deep clean um, well, that would be like your extra. So like your deep cleaning price would be an extra price that would be on charged on top of your standard pricing perimeters. So, okay. See, I'm still not getting it. So like, so right here. Okay. So let me go. And I'm sorry, this keeps kicking me out. So let me go to extras. So extras here is the deep cleaning. 
So when they click on, like when they're on their website page, right? And they have their standard price points that includes the, what it would be for a regular one one. So let's say that one one right under 1400 square feet came up to be $110. But like they're hoarders and the house is dirty and they click on an extra. And when mm -hmm. they click on the extra for a heavy duty cleaning, it'll be a $200 surcharge or extra price on top of that 110 so now their total would be 310 okay so this so deep cleans are in extras because i i think i set it up wrong i did my deep cleans in, like inside the parameters and that that is a way too so i am i'm oh. not like tech savvy whatsoever right i've seen people do it a couple of different ways to where there is a drop down um there is a drop down um what am i saying like there's a drop down they can they can create a drop down to where they can select standard deep cleaning move out cleaning right yes yeah. that's how i did it yep right so but that essentially still is the same uh wait hold on no because are you so, so when you do it like that are, are they asking you to set up separate pricing per each per parameter? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, so that's okay. not how you, that's not how you're teaching us is what you're saying. Correct. And, and there's no right or wrong way that way is probably right as, as well, because it gives you the option to do it. But like, that would just be a lot of math and a lot of, a lot of back end, because then, then I would have to like go to the parameters and create a, a pricing parameter per each per, one. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Literally. Yeah. Versus, so I just had it like way. this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Versus, I just had it like this. I just had an extra. So when somebody clicked to move out, they did it like this, right? And then when somebody wanted a heavy duty, they would just tap on the extra, you know, heavy duty if they needed a, you know, it was down there. Um, versus it being, um, like those separate separate parameters. All right. So just so you so you're suggesting that we set up. The parameters just for um the base the standard the move in and move out and let deep cleans be extras i mean it's the well, move in and move out is extras as well right yes it's okay. it's the easy way now and okay. this right here that we're seeing yeah okay. it's just you're just avoiding the other steps because otherwise let's say that that um that 90 where it was like ten dollars for the bathroom ten dollars for the square footage and ninety dollars for the bathroom, you could increase that price to where it's like what I don't know, one fifty for the bedroom, twenty for the bathroom, twenty for the square footage, and then you would have one fifty, sixty, seventy, one ninety, roughly, right? So you know what I mean. So you can play with the numbers like that too, and then there, and then you don't have to have the extras on the bottom. So like I said, you can do either way, one way or the other, the, the like that parameters of the bedroom, bathroom and square footage, those numbers would have to be created. So if you wanna take the extra time to, to do the pricing, then you know that you can totally do that. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna start all over. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a bit too much. It is. It <laughs> I was really, really go is. in the group and be like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah it, it was a lot okay yeah I wish that I wish they was able to find it find a way to make this much more user-friendly yeah. so even in here I'm going to set this up in extras right? mm -hmm. and then like if you are in an area so I don't know why this one doesn't have a duplicate down here but if you are in an area to where you service big houses um you can have extras with like a uh, square footage perimeter so like if it's a larger house and you're charging, you know, more. Correct. Okay. Okay. I, I think I also need maybe to do it your way. I think I was doing it the same way Sherry is explaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's way confusing. Yeah. And like I said, the way that you guys are doing it, it sounds like it's the right way. I'm just not text. Like, and I, I don't even know if I want to say tech savvy. I'm not tech patience, like <laughs> the patience to do all those, those different numbers and calculating that up. That's, that's where like, yeah, it's a lot. I didn't want to do all uh, of that. I, to be honest, I, I went ahead and purchased the, um, uh, book and koala video, I mean, a uh, course. 
Oh. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was all good up until that point. So I was mm -hmm. kind of going back and forth with how they're teaching it in the course. And then I went yeah. back to the video and it was different. So, so this is where you came in set up. So right here where you have yeah. your service categories, you yeah. add it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Got it. It's like, um, you press duplicate, duplicate. And I did that. And I just kept doing it over and over and over. But then when I went into BK to act like I was booking something, the numbers just seemed off. Yeah. So, so even a question, so I'm quite sure everyone else wants to know too, like when, even when we're setting that up, I know you said to add the bedrooms, um, the bathrooms, the square footage, but even when I did that, it still wasn't coming out to quite what I wanted to, like, for instance, a one bedroom, one bath, it, it wasn't adding up. So it's kind of like, I'm still a little confused about how, how I should add that up. Like, let's say if it's, it's 250 for a one bedroom, one bath, Uh huh. I'm going to put in, let me see. So for the one bedroom, I mean, for the bedroom, I'm going to put in, let's say 150 and everything else has to just then add up to the 250. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're making up numbers just to get to your. To end. your, yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. I, I feel like there's no like set equation. Yeah. There is. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, let's. I, like on this platform, like there's no, I wish there was like, if there was a way to be like, you know, there was a set equation and you just plug the numbers in like the end goal number and they would like put them where you need them to go. That would make it so much easier. But I don't think like there's no set equation unless there is. And I just haven't figured it out. I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. That makes it a little bit more clearer. Thank you for that. I appreciate You're welcome. It. I'll go back in and do that. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions about BK while we're on this platform? Okay. I will, let me see, I see something in chat. How do we teach a VA to handle thumbtack bookings when we're still figuring out our BK pricing? Um, do you have your pricing on Thumbtack? So if you have your pricing on Thumbtack, which I definitely recommend that you do, um, because that kind of helps weed out um, like out of market clients. Uh, because if you don't, then they just, if you don't list your prices, people will just submit their bid to you trying to figure out what your pricing is. And then if they get your price and they see that it's too high, then they're going to be like, okay, never mind, it's, it's too high. And now you paid for a bid that does not qualify within your market. So you want to put your pricing on Thumbtack and make it visible for move in and move out, deep clean and standard. But with the pricing, if you don't have your pricing on BK, then at least have accurate pricing on Thumbtack. And pricing on Thumbtack is so much easier than pricing on um, then pricing on here. Now, the only thing with Thumbtack is pricing is not included in your, is not included your, your square footage. So if, if they give you a pricing, so like here in Texas, right, I can have a three, two, that's 1500 square feet. In another neighborhood, a three, two could be 2,500 square feet, right? Because of a game room, a theater, a, 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 you know, all the things. So that's the only thing that you may want to be careful with is your pricing. So if anything for your VA, maybe just have a written price list. Um, put your medium price point on Thumbtack, right? Don't put your lowest. Um, I know sometimes I say put your lowest, but if you're really trying to make sure that you're getting your market so you're not having to pay for leads that's not interested in paying your price points, um, put like your low to medium price point, right? As in like a house from a thousand square feet to a house that's 3000 square feet, find like that medium average and put that price point on Thumbtack and then give your VA a price list, right? So normally how the conversation goes on Thumbtack when we first get a lead is we do our greeting hey, Spencer so-and-so, how are you doing today? Um, we do have open availability for you. Can you please confirm the square footage of your home, right? So that way I can see how close the quote was on Thumbtack to our price points. If it's off, then I'll let them know the new price point. But in my mind, I'm already having like that percentage threshold that I'm okay to offer. So I can kind of fill them out and see if he's hesitant or see like, 
if he's if the price is not questionable to him um and then so that that's how I would do the pricing if you don't have pricing on BK now the only thing is though if you don't if your pricing is not accurate on if your pricing does not match what's on Thumbtack it'll be challenging when it gets to the booking actually to the like the booking platform so let's say you put in a what I say three two let's say you put in a three two at 2000 square feet right and you add on these extra then it's a deep clean and they have pets and they want windows right so now their price is 400 <clears throat> but you told them 300 or Thumbtack quoted 300. So then you'll want to go down here to the to the coupons, right? And then you would enter in the amount that they're going to take off or the percentage amount. Okay. So then, um, so let's say, what do I say? 300. So this is 370, but tax is 30. So I would just take off 100 hit apply. So now it'll bring it down to the price point that is closest to Thumbtack. Now, one thing is though, setting up your back end. When you're setting up your back end, you wanna make sure that if you allow your uh, cleaners to see how much they will get per job, you wanna make sure that you exclude um, discount prices, which means that when a cleaner will see the job, when like when they you know snag the job or see the job, they will see the total amount. So they will see the 370 and then their total price or their, their total percentage from the 370. So if they're getting 50%, they'll see 50% of 370 versus 50% of 270. And then you don't want on payday, they'll be like, yo, wait, I'm like short 50 bucks. So you want to make sure that your back end is set up. To where they're only seeing they're, they're seeing the amount of like after any changes is done any coupons or discounts are done i know that was like a long answer but i was trying to like give you every scenario on how to make sure that's done so let me know kimmy if that answered your question and yes this, it did thank you okay you're welcome yeah and this is really big too like um because we, I, I had this problem a lot. Like me personally, I had this problem a lot in the beginning because I was giving the discount, but the cleaner was seeing the full amount and they were getting upset. And I'm like, yo, wait, like it's the total amount. So yeah. Okay, any other questions about that had anything to do BK related um, while I'm still on here? I have a question yes. that is BK related. Yes. Um, so I just need your advice on this. I noticed that my cleaner um, is spending a lot of, is spending more time cleaning. And I think because I don't do like um, walkthroughs, I'm a little bit at a disadvantage because I don't see the condition of the home. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that some of our clients are straight up lying. <laughs> that their homes are really dirty. Um, um, and so I, last week I had a job for my cleaner, the lady scheduled a deep clean. Um, and I felt like the because she didn't want any bedrooms, I, um, on Booking Koala, I sort of took off the pricing for the bedrooms. Uh, um, but then when the cleaner got to the house, the job that she did sort of made up like she might as well have done the bedrooms because the house was so dirty I should have I feel like I should have charged a heavy duty mm -hmm. price maybe yeah um but my my problem now is that do you think um because when I when we schedule jobs in Booking Koala and it sends it to the cleaner it kind of shows them the estimated time Mm -hmm. um, and I actually didn't realize this until the new cleaner I just hired um, is looking at like how long it'll take her to clean. And the estimated estimated time was like five hours, okay. but the payout was like $97. So it wasn't like adding up. Um, 
So do you, would you advise leaving the time for the providers to see or That's should I part. take it out? And I feel like it might also be misleading because like they might go over to a place and because I can't, I didn't walk through the home, they might take a yeah. little bit longer. And if I book them for two jobs, um, estimating that they'll be done in this time and they're not done, it might be... Yeah problematic i don't know i just want to get your thoughts on that the time i mean so the timing so i feel like yes and no right um i feel like yes you know to remove the timing because then you don't want a fast cleaner to feel like they can go a little bit longer um also like the timing is just a good estimate and sometimes if you don't like like you saw like when I was doing the pricing parameters it had estimated times on there but it's not as as accurate right i mean this because it's adding time like per additional add on and per additional thing that's done so you see like this job with all the add ons it's saying estimated time of 6 hours and 35 minutes um for a deep clean oven, fridge, windows, um, and it's a three, two, right? So you want to make sure if you do have the timing on there that you have the most accurate timing you can possibly put. I did just upload new t- uh, time estimates in circle as well. Um, but the one thing about cleaners showing up to jobs and the job is worse than they anticipated, right? You want to make sure that you try to communicate that with the cleaner. Like, hey, if you ever arrive to a job and it is looking pretty trashy, like let us know. That way we can make the proper price adjustments. Um, So that way you can make the proper price adjustments and let the cleaner know and then let the client know because that will happen. People will try to take advantage of, especially with the... um, like with bookings with no shows, like like no walkthrough, like the old school way where people have to do go do a walkthrough, give an estimate, and then do the cleaning. Um, you know, they will they will try to take advantage of that. But that's why you have to let the cleaner know, like, hey, if you arrive to the home and it's looking much worse than what a typical deep clean is needed, then to let us know we can add, you know, make that price adjustment. But of course, you can't make the price adjustment if the cleaner, if you didn't communicate that with the client, like after the fact, you know what I mean? Um, So unfortunately, that's the only thing. And then you can kind of tell sometimes with like their pre-booking verbiage as in like, hey, you know, I haven't cleaned my house in a minute or I've been bedridden or I've had out of town guests, you know, like they will like try to drop hints and let you know, like my house is kind of bad, but I do need a deep clean. And then when I kind of hear verbiage like that, I will ask them for any photos of the home. That way we can get an idea or I'll give them like a um, like a little uh, disclaimer as I'm like, hey, okay, so this is your price point, but it depends on the condition of the home. So if we arrive to the home and the condition requires more attention, then uh, we would have to increase that price point. Was that, who was that asked the question? Was that Sherry or was that Kimmy? It was me. Okay. It's Kimmy. Okay. So did that kind of make sense? Yeah, it did. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, you sort of answered my question in between because I was wondering what kind of verbiage I would use when I was, if I'm like telling somebody, you know, it depends on your price. It depends on the condition of the home. Like, how do I yeah. say that? Um, yeah, and I also think because I don't do the cleanings, I'm also at a disadvantage. So I I don't know how long it's gonna take to clean this homes. Um, right. I just look at the pictures on Book and Koala because I have the cleaners upload the jobs, and I'm like, dang, I should have totally charge way more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm a little bit lucky because my cleaner isn't complaining. Oh, um, but it's a good thing. But it's just. I, I just, I feel like it's just so unfair to her that she goes in and does all this work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, I feel like, you know, she finished a deep clean and she only made $132. <clears throat> and that's my fault because I priced too low and I didn't see like what right. the- Now is your standard pricing? 
good? Do you need it? Do you need to change um, like your actual price, like your overall price points? Honestly, I'm still figuring it out. Okay. Um, I'm still figuring it out as I go. I'm looking at my competitors' websites. Um, um, I've called and asked for quotes. I've done some, you know, fake price <laughs> pricing online, and so like I'm pretty much just filling it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as I no, go. I definitely, I definitely understand that. Yeah, like if you just if you're noticing that your prices are are too low, then hike them up some, um, and you can like get some feedback. Also, like get feedback like does anybody currently complain about your prices um I feel like yes and no okay um because um I'm gonna tell you a funny story um last week I was just done I was like I'm not booking on thumbtack mm -hmm. anymore and like five seconds before I I was just about to click the hide my business uh -huh. thumbtack charges me like 48 dollars for a lead and I am so mad because I'm like, no way, I'm not paying for this lead. So I'm yeah. like, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to just give this person a ridiculous quote. I'm going to go on my competitor's website, give them a ridiculous quote, and, you know, hopefully they'll leave me alone, and then I can ask them back for a refund. Turns <laughs> out this lady really wanted to book, end up booking me for, like, almost $800. Wow. And now I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then the same thing happens just right after I dropped the call. Another lady finds us on Facebook and she's like, oh, I need a booking. But my booking koala is so jacked up. So I'm using like my competitor's website <laughs> to give them a quote. And I feel like, oh my God, this quote is too high for a pressure clean. And she's like, okay, I'll pay it. And I'm still telling her, hey, if this takes more than we expect, we're going to charge her a fee. And she's like, it's yeah. fine. Just come. And because, so I'm like, oh gosh. Wow, that is so amazing. Look, because like the right client <laughs> knows how to pay. The only ones that are fearful of, of charging the right amount is us, right? Like clients, they don't know how new you are. They don't know if you just opened up yesterday, if, you, if you've been open for weeks, like charge the right price because you're only doing a disservice to yourself. You're only doing a disservice to your cleaner and to your customer, like, you want them to know like they have a real value cleaning company. And look at that. I mean, you made $800 off of a $48 lead. I that's, did. I did. That's it's amazing. Out, but. <laughs> and then that should give you the confidence to re-advise your prices. That's why I say do the competitive marketing, uh, uh, competitive research. Like see what your competitors are, are charging. You should not be charging too much less than your competitors because what is the what is the difference of service that you're providing that they are not or that they are? So definitely re-advise your pricing, look at your competitors in the area, and you should not be charging too much lower than what your competitors are charging. Okay. But I'm, I'm definitely glad for those two big wins. That's awesome. <laughs>